I come from absolute nothing. I should not be successful, but I am. And I show you how I did it. Transcended many, many things that most people would have just taken them out. And here we are. But that's not why we're here tonight. It's called, uh, what is this actually called? It had a great thing. Okay, unleash your inner super mom. Conquer the May and August school craze like a boss. Now, if you haven't noticed, we're in the month of May and my face is oily. It's at nighttime. I've got to go get the shower. It is what it is. Um, but it's May and this will also, okay, be on a podcast, Hot Moms Lifestyle Podcast. It is where everybody goes. It's the thing to listen to, especially if you want to transcend everything, live the best life. What we go over on that podcast, I should be charging for. Um, you will leave emotionally intelligent. And when you become emotionally intelligent, life just gets easier for you. So if you want to easy easier life and one filled with more sex sexual things and fun things sexy bodies tons of energy and feel like a good mommy then head over to the hot mom's lifestyle podcast there you go this is actually being filmed for hot mom's lifestyle podcast i just wanted to go live i had somebody ask me they really was like, will, please, will you please go live and i was like yeah i even contemplated whether or not when i turned it on i was like i really just want to talk by myself but then i was like maybe i feel like if there's just one woman a uh, person that can watch this and get empowered then I'm here for it. And I also know, you know, we're a PST. Some people are watching this at night. And if we can just watch this and just kind of change your mind, you know, change your mind a little bit, because that's the only thing in between you, me and what we actually want is we there's just another perception to see here. There's a we could just need to change our minds. Yes. Yes. So May comes around every year and I always our whole team. We all go through the frustration of dealing with um, moms who come in. They want to get their hormones fixed. They want to finally end the weight loss struggle. They're tired of doing cardio because our, our clickbait is how to lose weight without cardio and by balancing your hormones. We do that. We do that. And it's a trauma informed approach, meaning pretty much the reason all the other programs don't work is because they don't handle the root issue of the weight problem of the hormone problem. So we teach emotional intelligence and uh, regulating the nervous system and it works like a charm. We can get people's Hashimoto numbers down. We can get you out of adrenal fatigue, heal your gut issues. Um, have you eaten over 2,500 calories looking like a babe, right? With hardly any effort. So, but the reason we like spin our wheels and we do the things is from a thing called trauma. And a lot of women don't think that we have that. Oh, I had a good childhood, but they're just not, there's just ignorance, right? Ignorance is not knowing. Stupidity is like knowing, but not doing it, right? So a lot of people are just ignorant. I was totally ignorant. Life was really hard for me. And that's what we're going to talk about in May. You know, I noticed that women come in, they want the, they want the results, they want this thing, then boom, Kids get sick, um, school, this, you know, May, school's getting out, August comes in, school goes in. It's the same thing every year. Moms go crazy, moms get chaotic, there's a lot on their plate, and they just totally lose their shit. They lose track of everything, They it's just like, you know, running around like a fire drill, right? And I made a post about it, and I already had some spewing venom at me, telling me how much I was shaming all the moms. And you could, I mean, if you have tons of shame inside of you, because I'm only mirroring what you have inside of you. So a lot of people get triggered just by my essence, because I will trigger you into either changing or I will be the villain, you know? So they're already spewing venom at me from that post. If you don't, haven't seen it, go check it out. And for me, I want to share a story with you tonight that was super impactful. And I heard it and was like, God, this is everybody needs to know the story. The hand, the maiden with no hand. We're going to talk about that. I'll tell you the story. We're going to change our minds tonight. I'm going to give you some great tips for winning because aren't you, you're tired of this rat race. You're tired of running around, not putting like not even understanding to put yourself first. Women think putting themselves first is like a massage once a month you know like mother's day just came around and like half the mothers were doing things out of guilt and obligation and i'm like that's not a mother's day this is so much toxic enmeshment there's so many things underlying things that um keep us binded and not free oh so we could just go on for days but what we'll do now is i'll probably share the story with you with the maiden with no hand and then but first say about the the spewing venom post okay the beginning of the post i was saying it's time well i fuck, i'll read it to you how about you want me to read it to you say yes <laughs> let me just read it to you okay so the post says uh let me go to this one okay 
It's time to stop using our children as a shield and excuse. My kid is sick. I need to cancel everything today. School's out and my life is so chaotic. No, no, no. Um, Things have always been chaotic. The follow through has always been weak. There's always been self betrayal. Let's be real. And that stings to a lot of women because you can't sit there and tell me like I've been there. The only reason I know how to speak this language is because I've been there. I've been a very unhealed mommy. And like, I'm not saying I'm, I'm on this journey for life, baby. I'm always learning. Okay. But when I say I was an unhealed mommy, I was an unhealed mommy. And I, I was that I betrayed myself constantly. Things would always come up in between me and my thing. I would always plan something and then boom, something happened or somebody take something from me or something happened. You know, I was a victim of circumstance and women aren't seeing that. They're just thinking that, oh, that's called being a mom. No. Okay. It's not. And sometimes I have to play the dark feminine and I'm going to teach you how to do it too, because a lot of you see my story and know my story and you're like, how does she do it? How does she? Well, I think one way, I think a certain way. I'm going to teach you how I think. Okay. So I said, no, the follow through has always been weak. Your life's always been chaotic right now. It's just coming out in kids in May and you're and it's the kids as an excuse or they're sick or whatever. It's in your movie. It's in your storyline, right? I'm going back and forth from the post from like my thoughts. This is why I should totally do an audio book when I write my book. Um, the kids give you a valid excuse to put yourself last. Okay. And that's all we know. Kind of like saying it's not your fault, right? Solution. Um, now this is just like such a, surface level basic bitch solution okay there's so many deeper solutions here this is just something that i could give that fit in the damn 200 what is it 2200 take a deep breath or five take five minutes to sit outside by yourself and get out of the victim martyr shit that we learned from other wounded females in our lineage how would you feel right now if you moved all the anxiety how things are going to get done just your anxiety, tiredness, fear, and uncertainty aside. Feel that and take action or not take action out of that place. Most of us actually are doing things out of fear, out of obligation, out of guilt, out of thinking that we are overly responsible for everything. And now I'm not going to sit here and lie and be a fake fraud motherfucker and act like I got all my shit together. I work on the daily of trying not to feel overly responsible for people in my life. Clients, women, you know, all this stuff. It's a constant... Um, I always have to remind myself, especially if I'm run down of some sort or if I am dealing with a lot of things, I got to take extra time to vinyasana, yoga nidra, meditate, get in a bath, take care of myself, get outside for five minutes, write. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not sitting here and don't you think that I'm ever talking to you as if I don't understand. Okay, I'm a trauma informed coach. And sometimes I do have to do the dark feminine. Sometimes I, I, I you know, I shit, I care. Um, and I don't know another way of it's just not in my personality. And maybe there's something else for me to clear here. But um, I just see this and I feel like it's my job to go, hey, babe, wake the up. Let me throw some water in your face. Some people, however, are addicted to their pain bodies and their shitty circumstance. They, they don't want to see it any other way. They want to blame everybody else, including me, this girl sitting here talking to them. They don't, they're not like, I see what she's saying and I do want out of this. I want to be a calm mommy. I want to be a happy mommy with a happy, healthy body and a happy sex life. And just love the pe- just feel loved and supported and at peace and not feel run down and like I'm never on top of things and like I know you I know the fuck the fuck okay how would you feel if you moved all that aside call upon your goddess warrior the dark feminine she's the babe with the power she lives in you and she is you make changes that feel like freedom and by the way when you make changes that feel like freedom public service announcement it may feel uncomfortable when you have to set boundaries with yourself or with other people or by saying no you can't bring the fucking class cookies or no you can't do this or if your kid's sick um asking somebody else to take over while you get the thing done or maybe you know whatever it may feel uncomfortable okay but if it feels like freedom because you're choosing you you can do both so sometimes freedom may feel a little scary to those that have been prisoners okay it's just like they say sometimes peace may feel like chaos to those that don't understand what peace is like. I went for a long time and I was terrified of peace because my life was everything but peaceful. I didn't know peace. So when it when it felt peaceful, I got uncomfortable. I had to go create some, stir some shit up because I felt comfortable with chaos. I grew up 
with a chaotic mommy. I mean, I had to share my mom with anxiety, depression, alcohol, not feeling good enough, guilt, shame. I had to share my mom with all those things. Like, I get it. So do what you can with what you've got. Take action. And I said, figure it out. Figure it out. You are a solution-based bitch. Say it. I am a solution-based bitch. I love beautiful solutions. Say it with me. I love beautiful solutions. Yes. Take your life into your own hands and stop running around like a crazy person who thinks the world is on fire. It's not. It's just your trauma response in full effect. It's time to call the shots. It's time to empower yourself. No one's coming to save you. You and will save yourself this time. And then I put a, a plug in here like, hey, we're making it rain this month. I've got the Hot Moms Magic Hot Body Challenge. It's over this Saturday. Let me know if you want in. And I put a bunch of vibey, some sexy photos and before and afters up of mommies who have done the damn thing. Some of them were single mommies, by the way. So I had some people spew venom and tell me how bad I'm shaming them. And, you know, I should go straight to hell and da, da, da. And I understood putting it up, putting the evil eye up that baby, like if, you know, let's go clear the shame because that's why we are in martyr syndrome. There's so much shame. We have been taught this thing. And first of all, I could go on like a psychology thing here and do like the holistic psychology thing and all that's inside of what we teach the holistic approach but then there's this other level that's feminine and this is why I created Amar this course on beauty and the feminine womb rights and the rights of passage to being a female if you knew how imprisoned we were you would book it to find out about true femininity and you would find your goddess okay because the life that we are living most of most of us Okay, my former self, the life we were living was all lies. It was all programmed. It was all conditioned. It was all laid out for us before we even got here. Our religion, our beliefs, our everything was chosen for us way before we arrived. And you have to go back through and you have to peel all these layers back, right? So the mommies that are running around right now, yeah, I'm not going to lie. Last year, I filmed a video and I, I, I showed my house. It was in a wreck. They were putting new hardwood floors down. And this girl called on the phone and said she needed to cancel because her pipe broke. And I even have a video about what's more important, your life or your tire, because you got to realize, like, because a lady had a flat tire one time and then everybody got on their shit. Some of them, some of them saw the point of it. Some of them got really in their shit because they need to clear fucking emotions to store in their body because they can't even see past their own trauma shit, right? They don't recognize, like, this activation inside of them. They're triggered because they feel... Uh, disrespected or think something that I, and, and I'm causing the trigger right but it's really to cause it let me let it come up let me be the shapeshifter and turn into your shitty mom or your dad or whoever pissed you off so that you can go within and heal that part of you so you can quit attracting people that seem to bring this out of you right things are going to continue to show up in your story until you clear it and go huh I don't like feeling like this what's the solution here instead of spewing venom back at somebody right why do I feel like this person is shaming me this must mean I have shame in my body about being a mom I have shame somewhere let me go find the shame if everybody would do that wow um, wow what a world we would live in right so I just saw a cry for help I looked at our call tracker and I go holy shit why do we have all these cancellations? I mean, it was like record cancellations. And they're like, that. everybody got back. Everybody's just so over. It. Everybody's like, fucking mom's in school. Mom's getting their in, in their shit thinking, you know, I got to cancel. I can't make it. I can't, you know, this is everything's coming up and getting in their way because they're extra stressed this month. And I was like, and I did, I, you know, to, my, to certain people, I say certain words, but I also see the part of me that wants to help. I do want to help because I feel like it's my job. Um, and that's probably part of the thing that I need to clear and heal because I still have some fucked up thing. We're going to make it positive, though, that um, there's just something in me that feels like if I can say what I need to say and one woman, one one child's mommy wakes up and says she's tired of running around like she's in a rush all the time. She's tired of numbing out with with being busy or alcohol or food. She's tired of feeling like the doormat. She's tired of feeling like everybody else can have hot bodies and successful lives but her. That's who I used to be. Mm, I could get emotional here. <sighs> And I don't, I feel like I don't want to leave her behind, but I have to. And so maybe this is me and my last hurrah, you know? Yeah, totally. There's something there. So maybe this is my last hurrah because we're, nobody is coming to save. And why am I feeling like I can save you? I don't feel like I can save you. But maybe there's something in me that does. So you're literally getting to watch me experience 
my own um, activation and feeling like, wow, why am I doing all this, right? Why am I doing all this? I should just be living my life being powerful, happy Casey, rested Casey, happy mommy Casey, and letting those women come in. Why am I still trying to help this martyr, these women who are running around during May and August and can't even fucking like take care of themselves? Why am I still giving them energy? Why am I still giving them energy? Maybe this is the last time. Maybe it, maybe that would be cool. Maybe my brand will start attracting moms who are who are empo- more empowered, right? But the, for the ones that are not, listen up. Know that all of this is coming from being just, it's a disempowerment. There's so much power for every moment and every ounce of disempowerment you feel. Not good enough, mom. There's guilt. There's obligation. You feel like the doormat. There's a flip side, okay? There's a flip side to that energy. Seriously, you have to choose it. And that can be hard for some people that have run around their whole life and their identity is being a mommy. It's their only identity, being a mommy, being a hot mess mommy, being a mommy, 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 mommy. You will be the worst mom if that's your only source of identity and all the drama in your life, okay? If you want to be a happy mommy, it's be a happy girl. Happy wife, happy life, happy mom. Seriously, there's, there's truth in that. So the maiden with no hands, and then I'll close up and give you like the best that I know um, on the on a free podcast live video. So the maiden with no hands, are you ready? Are you ready? Let me um, see if we have any, because I can't see comments here. Let me just see. I don't want to miss any comments. Okay, good. Okay, we're good. Beautiful. So the maiden with no hands. And I think I shared this on one of our paid trainings. I just can't remember. There was a maiden that lived with her father, and he was a widower. His his wife died. He was pissy. He was authoritarian, do as I say, military type man, no emotion, you know, that kind of thing. Tough, big girls don't cry kind of thing. Well, his daughter grew up and got to be a teenager and kind of went through teen years and done what the fuck she wanted to do because her hormones took over. She, you know, she's got shit to do. Okay. Guys to date and stuff. He couldn't control her. So he did what most bully, authoritarian, aggressive men that are very insecure and haven't dealt with their boy shit do. They stomp their feet and piss around and try to hurt the woman and cast her out, which he did. He cut off her hands and sent her out into the woods by herself. So she figured out a way to actually keep herself alive. She found some pear trees nearby. She found some pear trees nearby and realized that she could eat just from her mouth and didn't need hands for it. So she did. And what do you know? The, the king's people found her and because that was the king's pear trees, his orchard. And the king's people found her, took her to the palace. Okay, well... Little did the, I'd left this part out. She was a total fucking babe. Okay. Total sexy, holy hot babe. Okay. Total baby. Super sexy. Heart of gold. Like Cinderella heart here. Like Disney story type chick. King immediately saw her, fell in love, was like, oh my God, you don't have to worry about a thing. You don't have to lift it. You don't even need hands. Like, you matter of fact, you don't even need hands. I will have my people take care of you. Right. It's every girl's dream. Right. <laughs> Be taken care of. So he, they did that. They fell madly in love, got married, had some babies, got pregnant, actually, not had the babies, got pregnant. They were twins, okay? Turns out, though, he had kind of like a monster-in-law, you know, the, that movie Monster-in-Law with Jane Fonda and Jennifer Lopez? Yeah, he had one of those as a mommy. Didn't want anybody near his her baby boy. Who is this woman that is influencing my baby boy? I don't like it. I'm jealous, blah, blah, blah. Fairest of them all, blah, 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 blah. let me have her. So she says, don't worry about anything. I'm going to deliver those babies. So time came when the babies were going to be delivered and the evil step, she's not the evil stepmother, the mother-in-law, (sighs) monster-in-law, delivers the babies. And right when she does, she casts out the daughter-in-law, the new princess. And she tells her some lies about... She scares the girl because see the girl when you're when you're disempowered when you're um, disempowered you don't feel powerful because you've your hands have been cut off and you've been surviving your whole life which most of us have we've been running around raised by moms who are anxious and running on coffee trying to do everything or some of them are single moms like you know doing the best that we're trying to shit with what you know we grow up we're wounded man we're just fucking wounded right. A lot of us don't even know it. My mom was so great. Oh, that's why all, most of your relationships are shit. You struggle with your body. you kind of got some struggle in your story, and you're not living an abundant life, right? So, yep, your life was perfect, and your mom was too. Yeah, yeah. We're not blaming anybody either. Parents, they did the best they could, right? But we're still, anyway, we won't even go there. She lied to her and told her all these lies, and told the town, she cast her out, sent the babies, the in, newborn babies out with the princess with no hands, sent them out in the woods, I guess to die, told the 
the prince king that she died in childbirth okay and the kids were so deformed they had to pretty much like kill them that they died they were so deformed and died at birth or whatever right horrible the king lost his shit out of grief i mean he's like losing his thing he's gonna have to go get on ssris now i don't even know if they have them back then this is me trying to be funny but seriously he's like he's in it he's in his shit the maiden finds herself out in the woods with two new infants all of you knew all of you moms like can you imagine out in the woods no hands new babies and they're starting to starve to death thirst to death and she's looking for water and, you know, trying to find water. She comes up on this pond and there's an old hag, actually, like this old hag looking lady uh, across the way. And she yells at her and she's like, help me, help me, my babies. They're going to, they're, they're thirsting to death. We need water and I don't have any hands. We need water. Help, help, help. And the lady goes, get it yourself. And the lady was like, I have no hands. I don't have any hands. And she goes, get it yourself. I know I'm right. And I'm sitting here like, this is a, the hell's going on here. So the lady, the, the beautiful prince, princess bends over. And, and as she tries to get water, you know, with her babies in her arms, with her, with her, she's trying to get it with her mouth. The babies fell in the water. Now she, the babies are going to drown and she's screaming for help. She's yelling at the old lady and she's like, please, please, please. Oh my God. You know, she's screaming, Tara, please help me get my babies. They're going to drown. And the old hag was like, get them yourself. She looked at her and the hag said, put your nubs in and get your babies. Sure enough, the princess stuck her arms in there and guess what happened? Her hands grew back like magic. She grabs her babies, pulls them out. They're fine. Didn't even swallow water. Don't worry about it. They're good. And the hag lady looks at her and says, now you have your hands back. Take your life into your own hands and go back to the king and live happily ever after. And she did. And all of a sudden, the old hag turned into the pear tree. Okay? And the story is, sometimes you have to do what you can with what you have. Instead of just being victim of circumstance. And a lot of us would look at that old lady and be like, what a bitch, what a whatever, whatever. But if she wouldn't have empowered this lady, call it the the, sh the people that throw in venom at me are going to say I'm shaming them. But it's really the dark feminine looking at you going, let's figure it out. You do it. You figure it out. You've got this, right? You know what I'm saying? So that's what a lot of women need right now is that dark feminine. Okay. Sometimes we, the happy and the, the free, the flowing, the feminine, the thing. See, the thing is, is a lot of women that's in their shit don't even know what that is. They don't understand. I know I didn't understand how to even relax because relaxation felt, I felt guilty for relaxing. I didn't understand how to fully relax because that wasn't in my nervous, my nervous system has never felt that. And did you know that you can't heal anything? There's no sickness. There's no weight problem, hormone problem, libido problem, constipation, hair falling out. Nothing can be fixed with a nervous system like that. You have to heal the nervous system or relax nervous system is where healing takes place. Okay. So you have to look at your situation and really ask yourself why you're doing what you're doing. And if you get down to it, it's probably because you think that's what good moms do or that's what you have to do. No, it's not. Nobody told you you had to have your kids in school. Well, I work. I do this. I don't. Right? Why don't you just make more money? If you can make more money and help people, actually help a lot more people than what you're doing now, you would make more money. And you could pay for help. You could even homeschool your children. And you could be around them even more. Oh, you don't want that because they drive you crazy? Right. That's also from trauma. Not wanting, not feeling like you just can't take it, right? But you're not supposed to be with them all the time, right? Kids need a fucking break from you. They need somebody else to play with them. You're a multidimensional mommy. You can be in multiple places at one time. So you need some money. Oh, so you're still working the nine to five thing, right? Unless you can go higher education and really turn into multi, multi six figures, multi high six figures. Because most of you, you know, if you're just making to me six figures, unless you're living very, very modestly, I, I just always wanted more. I wanted more things. I wanted more help. I wanted more support. I wanted better experiences. So really, if you just made more money, you could hire help. You could homeschool. You could delegate. You could have the best teachers come to your house. House, you could have an assistant you could pay you could have some help half of you still depend on your mommy and daddy like let's grow up and stop playing house shall we right oh you casey you're shaming no i'm trying to help you like get empowered and create your own life here because the reason you're doing everything you're doing is out of guilt and obligation anyway what a good girl should do well that's my mommy no it's not your mom's mother earth that's the only thing that takes care of your mom is somebody that had you she don't know you shit and you don't know her shit if you think so then that's that's abuse that's just abuse and you need to undo that. That's right. You see all this programming, right? Casey, you're crazy. No, no, no. I see you as crazy because look at how you're living. You're like, you're struggling, man, right? So when I struggle, I look at it and go, hmm, 
what is this feeling? What is this emotion? Where does it come from? Where did it originate? How can I alchemize it? How can I turn it into something that that helps me? How can I say no to this and yes to that? And that's what I do. I just create this solution. So the solution is, you know, if you're always canceling things because of kids or because of something else, you got to look at why are you afraid to get in? Why are you afraid to get the thing? Why is it uncomfortable you for things to work out for you? Because you don't feel worthy is why. Because you have so much deep shame. That's why you feel like I shame you. Because there's so much shame inside of you. Because we don't have the bodies and the money and these lifestyles that we want because we don't feel like we deserve them. How do I know that? Fucking hello. That's what I know. That's that's just what I've seen, observing, helping thousands of women and the breakthroughs. Listen, this isn't me. This is stuff that comes through me that's in our courses. They say, Casey, this is better than any therapy I've ever done. This is almost like like a psychedelic almost. You know, some have compared me or the not me, but the content to that because the stuff changes your mind. It changes who you are. It shows you things in a different light, a new perspective. So if you really did want to be a great mommy, you would learn, even if you don't think that stuff's going on, you got to look at your life and go, could you be more relaxed? Could you be more present? Could you be happier? Could you be wealthier? Could you have more sex? If the answer, you know, could you do anything more? Yeah. Everybody here could say, yeah. So if you really do want to excel and be the best human that you possibly could be, you'll dive into emotional intelligence work to looking deeply into guilt and shame and, um, You know, a trauma, looking into trauma, trauma is not like what happened to you and horrible. It's what didn't happen to you. It's understanding about emotional neglect and understanding why women as a whole betray ourselves. Why do we say we're going to go work out and go do all this stuff and we don't? Why do we try diets and then we fail? Why do we, why do we, why do I look like Garth from Wayne's World when my hair's like this? I don't know. Why, you know, why do we always have these high, great intentions and these, you know, I'm going to shoot for the moon and then it fizzles out. Why can some women seem to just have, be successful and have it and it's just so hard for you, right? All those things are indicators that there's something deeper there that can be cleared out and you too can have the dream life that you want and deserve. Because when you have what you want, when you have this life that you want and things are working out for you, it's actually safer than the one you're living now. It's crazy, right? So I highly encourage you to take action. I don't give a shit which way you go um, or even if it's with me. If you want it to be with me, I have so many free trainings that you can see if, if you feel led and you feel called to do this work because you're going to be a better mom. You're going to grow in value in the marketplace. You're going to just be above a lot of people because you're you're emotionally intelligent. You're it's I can't not above because, you know, they're below. It's just things won't get to you as much. You can't be controlled by the things that control the masses. You're free at this point. Okay, you create your own rules. Got it. So the best thing I would say for you to do um, for those that are like really serious and ready, you should probably do the mastermind. Um, CaseyShip.com forward slash apply. It's the application to apply for it. Not everybody's accepted. So if that doesn't work out, we have alternatives. We have starter programs. We have things called the pre-launch. It's for those that are really scared, really want to dip their toe in. We have coupons for that on CaseyShip.com forward slash shop. So there's all kinds of ways to do it. You can stalk all my content. Um, I would say the podcast would be the best place to go and just binge that. There's also a binge challenge that we have that's for free. It's got really cool videos videos on there throughout the years best training it's called caseyship.com forward slash tbc like the binge challenge that's another one so there's just tons of of things here for you to help okay and just know that you know my intention and everybody else's intention is never to to shame you into anything like we've had enough of that and it doesn't work you know if you want to feel shame just go sign up for another workout program and you'll fail and then you'll feel like shit you know until you just get enough of it and you seek to clear the shame once and for all. That's why we have a course called Drop the M- Drop the MF Weight Struggle. Um, it's funny, Amanda Francis has a course. She's the money queen, and she has a course called Drop the MF Money Struggle. And I saw that, and I'm like, Fuck, what? let me just put the weight struggle because this this will be huge. So shout out to her for giving me that idea. 
it's drop the MF weight struggle. We go through and clear out deep, deep shame and like why women really struggle with weight and food. We actually went through belly love the other day, belly love uh, module two, and it was heavy. I mean, it was heavy, but it shows you why we struggle with food, why we waste all this money on diets, why we, why we spend all this money with doctors and workouts and, and we're, we're still like on the struggle bus, you know? So we pretty much show you the reason why you would struggle in the first place. Anyway, there's that. That's what I wanted to say. Um, so that would conclude the training for tonight. It's not even a training, it's a podcast. Anyway, if you liked it, share with everybody you know. And the podcast, if you, if it helps you at all, I would love a review. It's kind of how like you could tip me. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Okay. Love it. I'm going to go get in the bath now and enjoy my 